happening guys we are back for another video here in our audio series and today we're going to be going over the dynamics panel there's a ton of great stuff in here i'm going to show you what each part is and how it works and how you might need to adjust some settings in there so covering dynamics today now yesterday we had a huge announcement with davinci resolve 17 tons of new features all kinds of awesome stuff going on which i'm going to cover in upcoming videos but just so you know, if you see something that looks a little different uh, on the screen here in this video, it's because I did update to the beta version of DaVinci Resolve 17. So if you haven't updated yet, maybe you want to consider it because there's a lot of cool stuff in there. But if you see something that looks a little different here, that's why. Because the previous couple videos of our series here was done in DaVinci Resolve, I think it was 16.2.7. And now I'm upgraded to 17. And I am using the studio version here, just so you know. So getting back into the dynamics today, we're going to cover that. We're going to get that all set. And after that, moving forward, we're going to start going through all of the different effects, audio effects, that is, that you can use on your clips or on your tracks here in the Fairlight tab. And you can use some of these in the edit tab as well. So I'm looking forward to going through all those different effects and just sharing them with you guys so you know what they do and kind of how they work. So if you just stumbled on this video because you want to know about dynamics, there are a few other videos in the series so far about setting your levels and some EQ. So be sure to check those out if you're interested in those. And if you want the sample file that we're using here, you can go on over to my Buy Me A Coffee page and download that. I'll leave the link in the description below, make it easy for you. All right, so let's get over into Resolve and start working with some dynamics. Oh yeah, real quick, some good headphones or good speakers. If you got them, it's gonna help make you uh, be able to hear those little nuances in the sound a little bit better. So uh, without further ado, into DaVinci Resolve we go. All right, so we're in DaVinci Resolve here. I'm in the Fairlight tab, and I do have the clip up that uh, you guys were able to download if you've been following along here. And if not, you can just try it out with your own clip. It'll work out too. So we've already set our levels. We've already done our EQ, and now we're going to go in and take care of some dynamics. So to get to the dynamics, you want to come and make sure your mixer is open. If you don't see your mixer, click on this icon right at the top here. It says Mixer. Then you want to come down your mixer, and right here we have a section called Dynamics. Now, if you don't see Dynamics for some reason, you can use your middle mouse wheel to scroll around, try and find it. And if you still don't see it, come on up to these three little dots right here, click on that, make sure you have Dynamics checked on. To open the Dynamics panel, just go ahead and double click it. So here's our Dynamics panel. We've got a lot going on here, a lot of great tools. I'm going to explain them all to you, how they work, and hopefully by the end of this video, it's going to make some sense for you. So just going over the window real quick, right over here we have our input, and that's going to be the signal of our audio coming into the Dynamics panel. Here is where we're going to see the changes that we're going to make, whether it's the expander, the gate, the compressor, or a limiter. Moving over to the next few meters we have here, it says gain reduction. So this first bar is going to tell you any reduction based on the gate or the expander. The middle one is going to show you any reduction based on your compressor. And the last one here is going to show you any reduction based on the limiter. And a quick easy way to remember that is they just go in the same order as you see them down here. Expander, gate, compressor, or limiter. And same up here, expander, gate, compressor, or limiter. So the next section we have here is makeup. And no, it's not the kind that you put on your face. And what makeup does is it boosts the output signal of your clip. So you're going to see once we get playing here, your meters are going to show what the input level is. And when you apply some of these things like gates and compressors and limiters, it may reduce the volume of your clip a little bit. So in order to boost that back up, you can grab your makeup slider and push it back up. And one thing to note, the makeup only works when you turn on your compressor down here. So you can see as I move the makeup up and down in the graph here, the signal is actually getting boosted up here. So I'm just gonna turn that off for right now. The next section we have here is the output signal. So that's gonna tell you what kind of levels you have on your output. And then you have your sidechain meter all the way on the right. All right, let's get down into this bottom section here, which is where all the magic happens. So the first item that we're gonna take a look at is the limiter because it's pretty straightforward and um, I think it's a good place to start. So, hey, why not? So if I wanna activate the limiter, you just go ahead and click on the word limiter. And now when we look at our graph here, you're gonna see two different color lines. This green line, which represents what's happening with our audio. So right now, all the levels are just how they were, nothing's changed, until it gets to where this blue line is. So this blue line represents the limiter. And what a limiter does is it says, okay, once any audio gets to this certain level that we set, don't let anything get louder than that. That's the limit of where my audio can go. So that's what the limiter does. So looking at some of the settings we have here for the limiter, right now we see its default setting is minus 21 dB. And if you're not sure what that means, just think about it in terms of your faders over here on your mixer channels. If you look at them, you can see you start at zero and it goes down. So minus 21 dB, 
right here, minus 21 dB. Now, I'm not saying this is where you would want to set it. This is just the default setting, but let's play through the clip with the limiter off, and then I'll turn it on, and you can see the difference that it makes here. What's happening, guys? Here is our sample audio clip we're going to be using as we work through the Fairlight tab here. We're going to be doing everything from setting our level. Okay, so you can see as I crank that way down to minus 29.9 dB, you can see that um, the blue line up here moved down to about 20, minus 29, and we could also see some of the reduction, the gain reduction happening here. So let me go ahead and just mute this track and let's play through it again and just watch our meter. So we have our input signal and it's obviously going above where we set our limiter, which is why over here in the gain reduction graphs, we see our limiter kicking in. And when we look at the output levels, we can see that it's cutting those output levels way back. So it should be around that minus 29 dB. Now, just to cover the buttons below here, and this is going to be the same for each section here, we have the attack. So the attack is how quickly is that limiter or the compressor or the gate? How quickly is that going to start once we hit our threshold that we set? So the lower that number, the faster that that limiter in this case is going to kick in. So you can leave this at the default if you want. You can slow it down or you can speed it up a little bit. And 0.7 uh, milliseconds is the fastest you can go there. And if you go ahead and you make any changes to any one of these knobs, you can always just double click it and that's going to bring it back to its default settings. So next up here in the middle, we have hold. So what is hold? So what hold means is once that limiter kicks in, it's going to hold those settings for a certain period of time after nothing is reaching the threshold that would initially cause that limiter to kick in. So for example, it's gonna kick in, let's say there's talking, that limiter's working, it's uh, limiting your audio, and then there's a space where nobody's talking. Well, how long is it gonna hold on and keep that limiter active until that limiter turns off? And if we look back at the dial here, you can see you can have it activate right away, or you can change it in milliseconds to however long you might want it to be. So depending on the situation, typically I might use something around, I don't know, uh, anywhere from half a second to a second and a half, which is 500 to uh, 1500 or 1600. It just depends on how it sounds and what kind of effect you want on your audio. The next item that we have here is release. So what is release? So release means once the effect stops, in this case, the limiter, once it stops, do you want it to jump right back to normal really quick? Or do you want it to gradually go back to normal, almost like fading back to normal? So you got to kind of think about these three things together. The attack, how quickly does it jump in and get started? The hold, how long does it last after we don't need it anymore? And then the release, do we want it to jump back to normal really quick or do we want it to gradually go back to normal with no dynamics or in this case, no limiter? So that's kind of the idea of how the attack, the hold and the release work. Let's talk about it a little bit more when we get into the compression here because I'm gonna use those more there. I don't really use the limiter much myself. Generally, I don't worry about the settings on these guys. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just turn off the limiter because like I mentioned, I don't use it much anyway. So let's go ahead and turn on the compressor. And I definitely use the compressor fairly often, pretty much all the time, pretty much all the time. So if you're not familiar with what a compressor does, a compressor will basically detect any peaks in your audio and will bring them down a little bit. Now, why do you want to do that? Well, let's say your audio was kind of quiet, but you had some parts that, you know, had some peaks in it and were pretty loud. Well, you want to bring up your whole audio clip, right? But you don't want any clipping to happen with those uh, spikes that you might have in your audio. So a compressor is going to reduce those peaks of your audio and compress them down a little bit. So that way they're not peaking and getting distorted or anything like that. You can kind of think of it as reducing the dynamic range of your audio signal. So a lot of times compression is used just to give voices a little bit more presence in your mix. Um, it can also be used to help smooth out the differences in levels that you might have within a given track. So looking at the compressor section here, I'm going to go ahead and click it and turn it on. And now you see we've got our green line here, which is our audio signal and what we're doing to it. You have a vertical blue line here now, and that's going to be our threshold. So that's going to say, OK, once your audio signal gets to this point, that's when the compressor is going to kick in. And moving down to the settings here, the default setting for the threshold is minus 15 dB. So let's leave that there and see how that does. So the next item we have here is ratio. And ratio says, okay, once that compressor kicks in, how much am I going to reduce the audio signal? So typically you want to use maybe two to one, maybe three to one or something for uh, voices. You don't want to overdo it because then it's going to sound mushed down and it's just, it probably won't sound so good. So try with two to one and see how it works out starting with that. And this says for every two decibels of volume over my threshold, reduce it in half. Basically, that's what two to one says. If you go up, you know, three to one is going to say for every three decibels over my threshold, reduce it down to one decibel. So let's start with the two to one and see how that sounds. Now, down below there, you have your attack, hold and release. And again, it's the same thing as what we talked about with the limiter. The attack is how quickly does that kick in? 
The hold is how long do I hold on to it after there's no more signal and I don't need the effect anymore. And release is how quickly should I go back to normal with no compression applied. So typically I leave these settings at the default and that works out pretty good. The last thing that you have here is your send and listen buttons. So if you want to do some automatic audio ducking here in DaVinci Resolve, you would want to come and click on the send button here because I would want my speaking track to be sent out to my music track so that way the music can automatically duck below my speaking. You don't have to do it manually or uh, anything like that. DaVinci Resolve can do that all for you. So generally I always turn that on. I hit on the send button on any of my vocal tracks. All right, so let's play through our clip and see if we have any compression being applied based on the settings we already have. How are we gonna know if any compression is being applied? Well, we're gonna look at our middle meter here and that's where our compressor will take effect. So if it lights up, then we know the compressor is active. So let's play through the clip and see what we got. What's happening guys, here is our sample audio clip we're gonna be using as we work through the Fairlight tab here. We're gonna be doing everything. Okay, so you see there's not much compression happening there. So just for example sake, let's drop this back to say minus 20 and uh, see, see if we have any compression then. What's happening guys, here is our sample audio clip we're gonna be using as we work through the Fairlight tab here we're going to be doing so we have a little bit of compression but not too much so let's say all right my levels are a little low i wanted to boost them up guys here is because we can see yeah it's a little below the 10 so i'm going to come and grab my makeup and i'm going to push that up to five so you can see that it boosted my whole signal of my audio so now let's play through and see if we get more compression kicking in and just see if we're getting more output on our meters here What's happening guys, here is our sample audio clip we're gonna be using as we work through the Fairlight tab here. We're gonna be doing everything from setting our levels to adding in some effects and hopefully seeing what all the effects here do. In so we can see that the compressor is kicking in and it's just kind of helping bring together that dynamic range of our clip a little bit so that the volume is loud enough, but we don't have any um, really loud points in our clip and it just kind of gives it a better overall sound and you don't have as many quiet parts versus loud parts. It kind of brings it all together a little bit. And if you wanted to just see, you know, what it sounds like if you crank it all the way up here, let's just do that for example sake here. What's happening guys, here is our sample audio clip we're gonna be using as we work through the Fairlight tab here. We're gonna be doing everything from setting our levels to adding in some effects and hopefully. So you can see it starts to sound a little wonky there when this is cranked up and you bring it down too much. So I'm just gonna bring this back up, let's say uh, there, I'm gonna reset this. And uh, I think we'll go with something like this for now. All right, so there we go. I think our compressor is good. And again, you can make presets for all this stuff. So if you use the same microphones all the time or the same setup, you can just apply your preset. You don't have to go through this process every time. And I do have a video on that. Check out the card above here and uh, you can go over and check out how to make some presets. So the next part we have here is the expander and the gate. And these are super helpful and I definitely use them all the time. So you can only have one of these on at a time. You wanna use either your expander or your gate. So the expander basically takes the quieter parts of your clip and brings them down a little bit relative to the louder parts of your clip. So for example, you might have some background hiss, a little computer fan going or something. By turning on the expander, it's gonna make the quiet parts of your clip or your track, it's gonna make it a little bit quieter so that way you don't hear it as much. So what's the difference between an expander and a gate? So a gate actually allows you to set a certain point and then below that point, you can lower the volume as much as you want. A gate, you can effectively mute anything below a certain threshold. So let's take a look at the settings and see how they work. All right, so I'm gonna turn on the expander here. And again, if you take a quick look at it, we've got our green signal here. Now we have another, uh, looks like a turquoise vertical line here. And that's gonna be our threshold for the expander. So if I look down in my settings here, we've got threshold and if I click and drag on it, you can see it changes and it doesn't move too much. It goes down about minus 50, but I'm gonna leave it at the default settings for now, which is uh, minus 35 dB. So what happens is once our signal hits that minus 35 dB, the expander is gonna drop that down to make sure it reaches zero dB by the time it's at the bottom of our uh, graph here. And what that's gonna do is lower the volume of anything down below our threshold. So if I turn it off, you can see this line pop back up. So it just shuts down the sound as it gets lower and lower towards zero. So lowers the quieter sounds of your track or your clips. And again, you've got some other settings here. You can change the range a little bit just to change how much it's cutting down that volume. You can change the ratio if you want. And all these are gonna have a different effect on it. You can see how it works out based on your particular clips. But I'd say try the default settings first and see how that works out. And again, down here we have attack, hold and release. So how quickly do you want that expander to kick in? How long do you wanna hold it after we don't need it anymore? And how long 
should it take to go back to normal? So generally, if I'm using the expander, I'm going to leave these settings at the default settings. But where I do change them is if I'm using the gate. So now let's turn on the gate. So you see, as soon as I turned on that gate, we still have our threshold set at that minus 35 dB. But look how quickly that signal drops down and we're reducing the volume in this area here. Anything below that minus 35 shoots down real quick and it's going to knock all that sound out. Now you can come down and play with the other settings. For example, right here. I'm reducing everything below 30, minus 35 dB. It's basically going to mute all that. So you can play with the range to see how much you need to knock that signal back if it's something like, you know, fans in the background or uh, some kind of background noise that you don't want to hear, especially between your talking. Maybe you take a break or you take a breath or whatever. You don't want to hear that stuff. So by adjusting these settings, you can effectively get rid of that for the most part. The ratio here, you don't need to use when you have the gate activated. So you don't need to worry about that. And then down here, again, with our attack, hold, and release, the attack, I'm going to leave that where it is. Hold, maybe I want it to stay active a little longer, so I might bring that up, I don't know, to say half a second. And how long do I want it to take to go back to normal? Uh, you can boost it up a little bit and um, let it ease back in to our normal sound. So if I turn on the gate, I'm going to play through the clip, and I'm just going to adjust the range here a little bit so you can hear how it might cut it off a little. So let's try and see if we hear anything right in the beginning here. So you can see, actually, before we even get to it, that we were having a, a, re a gain reduction here based on our gate settings. It was just cutting out all that noise. So if I turn off the gate, you hear that. And if I turn on the gate, you can see it's already being applied here. And listen, we should hear nothing. What's happening, guys? Here is our sample audio clip we're going to be using as we work through the Fairlight tab here. We're going to be doing everything from setting our levels to adding in some effects and hopefully seeing what all the effects here do in the Fairlight tab. So this is the sample clip we're going to be starting with. I'm going to make this available to you guys to use so that you can follow along if you want to. So uh, let's get into editing some audio. So you can see it didn't quite kick in at the end there, but maybe say I wanted it to. Um, because, you know, that's going to be a quieter part of the clip. Well, I can just uh, boost the range and I can actually bring down or bring up the threshold a little bit here because I want to catch any of those signals that are in that quieter range. So if I just bring this down, let's just select uh, this last range here. So I select my range, I'm going to hit my loop key, and then I'm just going to hit uh, option and forward slash and it should play in a loop for me. So if I turn off the gate... Here's what we hear. And now I want to get rid of that. So if I turn it on, you can see we're getting rid of some of it. If I bring it up a little more, see how it's getting less and less. Now, generally, I'm not going to bring this up that high for the gate. Um, I'm going to keep it a little bit lower. But you get the idea. That's kind of how it works. And if I want to drop the signal down even more after that, pretty much takes care of it. You can hear that little spike in there a little bit. But that's the idea of how the gate works. But it can be super helpful to help get rid of some of that background noise. Again, not necessarily while you're speaking, but in between those uh, parts where you're speaking or the quiet parts of your clip. And I use the gate all the time, especially in my little studio setup down here. It makes a lot of sense. There's you know, background noises that go on all the time. So I definitely use the gate all the time. And if not the gate, I definitely at least enable the expander because that works out good and uh, I use that pretty often. All right, so just to play through my clip here and get things dialed in, uh, I'm going to turn on my loop. I'm going to select the entire clip here and just let it loop through as I make some adjustments to my settings here in the dynamics. All right, so I think that's going to be good enough for now. I'm happy with that, and uh, we should be all set here in the dynamics panel. Again, remember, you can save all this stuff as a preset if you want to, um, and that way you don't have to go through and apply the same settings all the time. I do, and it saves a lot of time. It's like a one-click thing. You just boom, pop into preset, and you should be good to go with at least somewhere good to start. All right, guys, so there you go. That is the Dynamics panel here in DaVinci Resolve in the Fairlight page. I use it all the time. I'm always turning on the settings in there, a little compression, and definitely a gate or an expander. So if you're like me and you love some good audio, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you keep up with this series and all the audio stuff we're going to be going through here in the Fairlight tab. So thank you guys for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you learned a little something. Definitely subscribe. The little bell, too, so you get notified when I put out a new video. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Peace.